Hey, it's John here. This is foreclosure problem 97, Pascal's triangle. And we just want to return the nth row of Pascal's triangle, which is defined as starting as a vector of 1, and then a vector of 1, 1, and then a vector of 1, the sum of the adjacent numbers, and then a 1 again, etc. So then here we have. 1 and then 1 plus 2 is 3 and 2 plus 1 is 3 and then 1 etc etc uh, so my idea with this is essentially to take the row and then pad it with the zero on the start of the end and then sum up all the adjacent pairs will be the next row so uh, let's just make a little function for that uh, we're going to call it sum row and it's going to take some x's in and then what we'll do is we're going to do this as macro and we're just going to call uh, x's is going to be called x's again and then so we see if we just use that um, it'll just return whatever we put in so let's look at that call our function here. So if we put in a 1, we get a 1. If we put in a 1, 1, we get 1, 1. Okay, so now we can modify this x's to, uh, what we want to do is pad it. So we're going to concat 0 onto x's and then add in another 0 at the end. that a vector. There we go. So now we have a padded row. And then what we want to do is loop across there and add up the pairs. And what can we do there? If we said Partition, partition with a step, right? So we're going to take partition to step one x's. What does that give us? That gives us the pairs. And then we can reduce those with the plus. back okay if we map plus across X's what does it do can't cast a sequence to a number There we go. Sorry about that. Yeah. We will map apply plus across those and that reduces it for us. Good. So we have our, our function to sum up a row. Alright, so now what we want to do is uh, make the 
the general recursive function that's going to use this sum row function. So we're going to put this whole thing into a let binding. So we're going to move our sum row over here. And this is just going to be a function. And we will suck that whole thing into our let binding. And then we can start using this. All right, and this whole thing will become our function Pascal. And it's going to take an row in in there. And then inside of our let binding, we're going to say, uh, if n is less than 2, our base case, then just return 1. Otherwise, sum the row of Pascal of decrement n. All right, we're gonna get the call the Pascal function on the row be, on the row before, and then sum it up and return it. So, kind of a standard recursive trick. So let's give this whole thing a try. Uh, oh, we. Now let's call the Pascal function. So if we call it with row one, we get one. If we call it with row two, we get one, one. If we call it with row three, one, two, one, one, three, three, one, etc. All right, so that seems to work. Let's put our answer in the machine and see what happens. It doesn't know as. Okay, it looks like our as macro is potentially too new for foreclosure. Looks like it was added in 1.5. Uh, okay, let's fix that. Um, I'll just thread X's and thread first. All right make an anonymous function here and stick it there. And we'll call that anonymous function. And how about we'll make it thread last to make that one work. And it will also make the next one work. Let's try that again. Oh, we need to take the, remove that X, okay. There we go. Sorry about that, the, there's this handy new macro as, which lets you, kind of gets you around these weird threading things where uh, if the position of the thing you want to thread changes in the different function calls, it's not, here it's not the first or the last. And then you sort of have to make these anonymous functions and and then call the function within the macro. So it kind of ruins the threading macro. But with this as named thing, then you can specify where it is in every function call, which is pretty handy. All right, so let's paste that in and see what we get.
Okay, it worked. Thanks for watching.